Hello and welcome to lab two. We're going to talk about sky navigation really quick. So here is a little review about uh, latitude and longitude. We just discussed it a little bit in the write-up, but here is an image so I can show you. So we have the equator on the earth, right? And then we um, count uh, the degrees around the equator. And then we also have degrees up to the North Pole. So um, when we go east or west or north or south, um, we can find things. So this point right here is 40 degrees north, 30 degrees west. And so that allows us um, to find anything on the planet. So within the sky and the celestial sphere, we already talked about this in the lecture, but we're going to talk about it again. Um, we have the local system, which um, in the example is like the directions to Culver's. Um, so you give a street, uh, you know, a number on a specific street, which will allow you to find that. So the local system is like the number system and street system. So we use the altitude azimuth coordinates. Altitude, of course, is alt in this. It's um, altitude from the horizon. So something on the horizon line is zero degrees. Something that's directly above your head, which is called the zenith, is at 90 degrees. And so if I were to tell you something was located at 45 degrees, you'd go about halfway up. The azimuth, though, is degrees from north. So that's like on a compass. So if I take the compass on my phone and I uh, stand where my phone is pointing toward north, it will say zero degrees. Then if I turn to the east, it, I'll be at 90 degrees. If I turn to the south, it'll say 180 degrees. If I turn directly west, it'll be 270 degrees. So if I were to tell you at nine o'clock at night to go look up at 180 degrees, if I do altitude azimuth, sorry, uh, 45 degrees at 180 degrees, you would turn toward the south and look about halfway up in the sky. So that, and then the latitude longitude equivalent is the celestial coordinates that we have. And so this is sort of like the standard system. And that's in declination and right ascension. Um, so declination is degrees north or south of the celestial equator. So that's like altitude. And then right ascension is, it's measured in hours, minutes, and sequ seconds eastward from the position of the sun at vernal equinox. What in the world does that mean? Well, vernal equinox is coming up. Uh, nope, I'm sorry, that's the uh, summer solstice. I'm so sorry. Vernal equinox is the first day of spring. And so wherever the sun is in the sky on the first day of spring is actually uh, where the vernal equinox. So everything um, starts from there. So it's the same kind of thing. If we go around, um, we have um, so we have latitude and longitude. Latitude, of course, is up and down. Longitude is around. So um, right ascension is around and declination is up and down. So if we look on the celestial sphere here, um, let's see, the celestial equator, the south celestial pole, the north celestial pole, and the equator, do we have the right ascension? Do we, they don't have the vernal equinox shown here. Oh, or do they? Right ascension, zero declination. So that would be the vernal equinox. That is the zero, zero point on the solar sphere. And so we can locate Betelgeuse at right ascension, five hours, 52 minutes, and declination is seven. My eyes are not very good here. Uh, seven degrees, 24 minutes or something like that. Seven hours, I'm sorry, 24 minutes. No, Those, yep, no declination is degrees. Anyway, it doesn't make sense. Okay, so degrees up and down, zero to 90, and then hours around. And so um, anyway, it's just a local system. This is harder to do. Um, both the local system and the celestial coordinates, you um, you kind of need to know like a time when you're gonna view something. Because if it's, you know, it's during the day, of course you can't really see anything. So you need to give a time with that as well. Um, so at a specific time, this will be uh, visible at, um, the local system, alt as, is way better. We use that mostly in class. If I have you do stuff for a report, I have you find right ascension and declination because that is the standard system and that's basically where it is on this sphere. The right ascension declination never changes, um, but in order to view it, 
you have to figure out the time when it's visible too. So this is way more complicated. So anyway, um, that's what that is. Um, the, the final thing, we did talk a little bit about size when we talk about something in the sky. Of course, if this is um, just something we're looking at sky, the angular size here, this is 30 degrees and this is 60 degrees. If you remember, the bunny is 30 degrees, the shark is 60 degrees. Because we take a circle, we cut it up into 360 degrees. We take one of those degrees and cut it up into arc minutes. One of those arc minutes, we cut up into arc seconds. All right, so that's how we tell things. So we can, there's three different ways you can tell somebody where to find something. You could tell them to look within a constellation. You can tell them to look someplace in the local system at a specific time. And then you could tell them to look at a standard system and then they have to figure out when to figure out uh, when to view it. So anyway, okay, that's it.